I, I don't just, like the beanie. I just asked if I look cute. Courtney, I told you, this is Carhartt. Carhartt's in. Courtney, where do you want me? Here? <laughs> where, 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 where am I supposed to sit? <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I am so excited today to show you guys the cutest eclectic kitchen right in Tacoma. Everyone, my name is Kasten. I am here with King's Kitchen, and this is probably one of my favorite projects. Super eclectic. I love the colors working together. And of course, we used Belmont cabinets. And okay, before, before I even take you guys any closer, really quick, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit that little bell button, and get notified whenever we release a new video. And again, before I like take you around this kitchen, let's do a deep dive into what this kitchen looked like when we first got here and what our homeowner and our client was struggling with in the space when it came to storage, workspace, and all that good stuff. So I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, so here we have a few before pictures I am showing you. And let's go through some items and really show what was problematic in the original kitchen. Um, and things that were really important for our client to get uh, improvements on. So number one, um, we have a sink, sink centered on the kitchen window, very typical. But as you can see, left and right, there was no space for a dishwasher. And she really wanted a dishwasher, even a small one. But it is definitely a game changer if you're working in your kitchen. Uh, one of the number one things that people come to us a lot is uh, a problem with, I don't have enough counter space. But a lot of times it's not just for the counter space, it's also the storage and having places for items to get them off the counter. And that way you can use more counter space. But we did have an issue here in this kitchen. Um, definitely one of the needs was I want more counter space. Another thing that I am seeing here, if we're looking over towards the range section to the left is I, you know, I, it's really not um, perfect to have a range um, that has an open section on one side, you really want at least 12 to 15 inches of landing space left and right of the range. And that is extremely helpful having utensils laying there, different things. So I, um, you know, I definitely uh, thought that that needed some improvement right there. And, and she did as well. You know, that was definitely on her wish list. Now we had existing venting uh, in this kitchen prior to us doing the project, but we definitely wanted to adjust that and make it all look a little bit more seamless. So that is just in this section something that we wanted to improve on. Now you see a little island in this kitchen that was just for extra storage because that was also a very, very big problem here. We did not have enough storage in this kitchen. Now looking at the second image, this shows you the range a little bit better. And as you can see, there is a doorway right left of that range. So we can't extend that run anymore. We had to work with uh, the available space that we have right there. And that really meant shifting the range over to the right, just a snitch so we can get more cabinets to the left and create that landing space. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture uh, looking from the kitchen into the living room, but you can see here on the left where you see that little bit of orange, those cubes, that was just little storage that our client had added right there, but it was a very small section. And then there was a wall bump out towards it, the inside of the kitchen. And there was a old chimney running from the cellar all the way up to the uh, upper story into the attic space. Now, you know, that was something that we wanted to tackle. Yes, it, it was you know, increasing the cost on the project. But once we started looking and taking a closer look into this chimney, it was actually not connected and running through the roof anymore, which took away its structural stability. So it was already in the attic kind of leaning. That was a big, big, um, um, you know, old chimney with a lot of weight. So that was actually a, um, a dangerous kind of hazard having that up there. So uh, I'm happy that we got to discuss the fact that we wanted to remove that. And by removing that, and then we got HVAC involved and removed or, you know, relocated some of the venting and the piping. 
And that gave us space for a really nice big pantry unit. And that was so much needed in this, um, in this very small kitchen footprint. With opening up that section, we did open up the walkway a little bit wider. And you'll see another picture here in a minute, like when we're done at the end of the video, where the walkway into the kind of dining and living room is real nice and big. So we were able to create a little peninsula that allowed for two seats um, for people to, you know, hang out while our hostess is, um, you know, being in the kitchen and prepping everything, but it's nice to entertain. And that peninsula also created a ton more countertop space. So super excited to show you next the drawings that we have for this kitchen. Okay, so now we are looking at the drawings and you can see um, we ended up shifting the sink and we added a dishwasher. You know, actually, I need to backtrack. The sink might have not been uh, centered in the original place on that window. And for like storage units and like certain cabinet sizes, it was okay with not centering it on the window because it is more important for us to get other things in there. So number one, we wanted a dishwasher. So we got a dishwasher on the right side of the sink base. Number two, we actually did a smaller sink base. Technically, sink bases are really wasted cabinets. And I, I know most people want a really big sink. And typically, 90% of people end up with a 36-inch sink base. But, you know, you can get, instead of a 33-inch sink, you could go to a 30-inch, put it in a smaller sink base. You're you're having a cabinet that's smaller, that's less wasted space. And, and really, you're still getting a really big sink. You know, pull a tape measure and see how big 30, 33 inches of sink, sink really is. I mean, it's it's really big. And the newer sinks are also very deep. So you're not just going wider, but you're also going deeper. So sometimes I think it's a little overkill because, you know, the footprint and especially the base cabinets, that's prime real estate in any kitchen. So I love that we were able to like, you know, give a little bit of a smaller sink base. And then um, we're doing a, in the corner, we had a 33 inch Lazy Susan, which is the smallest Lazy Susan that you can use with still having the Lazy Susan trace, which is still a very, very good solution for any corner. And now we have 19 inches of solid drawer space and drawers are the best. And in the top drawer, we have a top drawer, like a two-tiered cutlery divider. And then we have, um, you know, we have four drawers here. So really nice for storage. And then we were able to take our 30-inch range and actually switch it over a little bit closer to that sink wall. With that, we added a about 12 and three quarters inch section that we can add another base cabinet. And because we don't have a ton of storage here, and sometimes when drawers get too small, it kind of, it's kind of losing its um, kind of space as well and its function. So we ended up adding a um, almost like a spice rack in this section left of the range. And then we have wall cabinets. We extended the wall cabinets a little bit further to the ceiling, but we left enough space over the wall cabinets to run that vent out um, in, on the original wall that it was running out. Okay, cool. So that was the sink run. And then if you take a left, uh, I'm sorry, if you take a look um, down on the bottom of this drawing here, you see we have a 36 inch tall pantry with rollouts. And that was a game changer in this kitchen. That is adding so much extra storage. Um, there was no need for this little island in here. And really, if you look at the dimensions in this kitchen, if you were to add an island because of walkway necessity, it would have been super tiny. So it was kind of a waste, like not every kitchen needs an island. So after we reconfigured everything, there was no need for an island in here. So uh, super nice big pantry unit. And then we widened open that entire section for the peninsula looking into the dining living room. So we have a big drawer base right here, really nice big drawer base. This is so much storage. Um, and we actually changed the depth a little bit to have a clear walkway into the hallway. So the pantry unit is a little bit less deep and the drawer base is a little bit less deep. And then we had a returned wall cabinet that's just a little bit of extra storage again, sideways um, facing kind of the refrigerator wall that we put right there. And you have a nice big peninsula countertop that extends into the dining area. So you can have two seats here and people kind of 
being entertained by the host, but also being there chatting away. You might have girlfriends over for ladies night. So um, that turned out really nice. Um, okay, so we walked through some befores. We walked through the layout and obviously the problems and what we were trying to achieve in this kitchen. Now let's uh, talk about some of the main selections just really quick. I actually don't have all of the samples here, but as I always mention for you guys, I will list them in the comments below with links so you can find them for yourself if there's something that you really, really loved in this project and maybe want to add it to your new kitchen. You guys know I love Belmonts. The cabinets that we used for this project, it was the Belmont cabinet line, and it was a mix between the 16 and 1900 cabinet line. We love thin frame door styles. Um, I've been saying this for a little while now, and Shaker is phasing out, guys, okay? So Shaker, that's the wider profile that everybody knows. It's kind of like standard on HGTV, standard for most contractors. So if you're just, you know, if you're just approaching a general contractor and you're not like a design build like us, it's like, oh yeah, we'll put some white Shaker in there, you'll be fine. It is really not good anymore. So it's really, I would say it's safe right? But if you're planning for the next 10, 15 years, you know, maybe let's be a little bit more cutting edge, a little bit more on the forefront. So thin frame door styles are definitely on the forefront. And uh, something that we see a lot is roof cut white oak, super popular. In the kitchen that you see in this video, we ended up with the Monet door. So that's the 1900 line. And it is actually a vertical grain direction. So not like the sample, the sample shows the horizontal grain direction but we did the same color, which is roof cut white oak in a natural stain. And then on the wall cabinets and on the tall units and the pantry, we did the same door style in the 1600 line, which is then called in the paint finish, the Matisse door. And we did it in paint white because we have a lot of other fun accents in that kitchen, like the tile. So um, really to open up the space, give it a little bit more of an airy feel, we added that secondary white color to that. And then actually I will try to pull that up here. I have enough hands left. Here is the countertop and that is by MSI. This one is, wait, what was that color? It is the Soapstone Mist, which is a really light gray. You can see there's just a hint of uh, light white veining in there. So it's not just like a solid gray. And the thing too, don't be afraid of grays in that sense of, oh no, grays are out. Grays are out if you're overdoing them, okay? Grays look stunning when they're combined with wood in a right way. They actually, I think, bring a whole nother level of beauty to the design. So, um, you know, you could have just added white on the counters, but I think that the gray actually makes it look a lot better. So it was kind of like the missing piece. So this very light gray, again, MSI, um, soapstone mist, I'm trying to show this to you a little bit closer, a very good color, actually more of an entry way color. So you don't have to always go over the top on all of the finishes in this kitchen. We didn't go over top with the countertops. We've invested a little bit more in the cabinets and they're kind of the foundation. And on average, they take up about, I would say 30% of a project budget. And, um, but yeah, the, this color looks definitely, the MSI color looks very good with this. Okay, now all the other selections I will have for you guys in the description below. And I think all that is left to do is to jump back into the kitchen and walk you around what the end result is, what it all ended up looking like, and probably end this video with a little slideshow of after pictures. All right, welcome back to the finished project, guys. You've seen those pictures. We had no storage in here. Now we have so much more counter space. And on top of that, we went with the Belmont line, we did a mix between the 1600 and the 1900 line. And of course, I'll, I'll make sure I link all of the you know specifications and all of our selections below. But um, what happened with that is it's a frameless line. So when you're working in a small space like this, use a frameless cabinet line so you get every inch out of your kitchen. And if you have not seen all of my Belmont videos, you know, talking about the different kind of pros of the lines, 
A big one when you're working with Belmont in their frameless cabinet line is we can modify widths of cabinets with no extra charge for you. So that is a super pro, especially working in small kitchen spaces. Now we, as you've seen in the pictures before, we did not have a dishwasher in this space and now we do. And Kate did tell us earlier in this project that that was a game changer. We have a really nice uh, kitchen sink station, a four drawer base for lots of storage. We have a corner unit, a lazy Susan. Just a little pro tip, if you are working on your own kitchen design and you're you know, not working with a professional, whenever you are doing a corner lazy Susan unit, 99% of the times if you have an angled corner like this, you have a double door opening, like in this case. Always make sure that your door is hinged the opposite direction of your range because ranges will always stick out, okay? That's just a little, little pro tip for you guys. And then we have a range of venting was all done. Beautiful how that integrated. And then we have a spice pullout over here. We have a couple of extra pictures of that as well. Now, the big part that I think got our, our clients super excited in this kitchen is taking out the old chimney on this section over here and uh, installing a floor to ceiling oversized pantry unit. We did not have that in that space. That is so much storage space, you know, and then opening up this section and uh, including this peninsula. So it's really, you know, for hosting, it's just so much more fun now. The floor to ceiling pantry and then this integrated peninsula that just was a game changer when it came to seating and having people over and guests. And then check out this beautiful beam and post section. And then over here we have an integrated storage section and I love how we tiled the back here. And a lot of this was our client's ideas and I love how she put everything together. We just kind of, you know, confirmed some of the selections with her, but I uh, am absolutely obsessed with this blue and how it ties in with the box flush in the kitchen. That was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this kitchen gave you a little bit of inspiration to do something different, do something more exciting. And uh, I'm going to call it a day. I will see you guys next week. I hope you liked this video. Share it with everybody. Share this really awesome uh, kitchen project with your friends and family. And um, we're going to leave you here with a couple of seconds of some fun more clips of how this kitchen turned out. I'll see you next week. Bye. call or text and get my questions answered in a timely fashion um, so yeah it went really well and then for the end result I couldn't be more happy with how it turned out I absolutely love it